Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and for the function of the day, or the week, today, um, I want to talk about into. Now into seems like a very simple function to begin with. Uh, we have the name into, and then we have a collection that we want to put values into, and a collection we are taking them from. Now, on the surface, this itself seems rather basic, right? I mean, like we're just pouring from one place into the other. But there's a couple things that we can look at this. Uh, we, we can look at that are that are actually a little bit interesting, interesting use cases for this function. So first of all, this is pretty simple and it works well um, when we want to convert a collection to another. So if we have one, two, three, and four, and we want to put those into a set, that's a one way we can convert a vector into a set. In fact, you would you might say, well, why can't we just do this set one, two, three, four? Well, we can. Um, but what we're going to do is, if we look here at how set is implemented, we see that, um, actually it doesn't use into, I thought it used to use into uh, internally. Uh, but it's pretty much the same same code. Now, there is a couple things that into does that are, that are a little bit interesting. Now, first of all, um, it uses conj, or a variant of conj, to put the values into the collection. Which means that if we have something like a, into a hash map, and then we have as, uh, pairs of keys and values, a is one and b is two, then it will construct a hash map with those mappings because conj on a hash map uh, assumes that the value that you give it is these pairs. So if you remember uh, one of our other functions of the day, we talked about conj and all the weird side cases with conj. Well, this is an example of using that for our advantage. Now, the other thing that's happening here is that underneath all of this, into will do a couple of performance optimizations. First of all, it will use transients. So it will take this, these sets or vectors or whatever our into collection is and make a transient version of that and then add values to it. So it's not necessarily creating a new collection every time. It's optimizing that away for, uh, it's optimizing for us the, the conversion into transients. And what's basically going to happen there is, um, I did a tutorial on transients as well, but basically what's happening is um, it makes these collections mutable just during this calculation and then makes them immutable again. But we get all those properties of immutable uh, immutability at the start and at the end. I mean, it's not actually going to modify this collection. It's just going to create a copy of it, make that copy mutable, make a bunch of changes to it, and then go from there. And all of that is done in a very efficient manner. So it's actually 01. Um, I mean, it's a constant time operation to go to and from uh, transients. So that's that's cool. Now, the other thing that's interesting here is that this is actually a reduce operation. I mean, we can look at the, um, here's the implementation of into. And see, what we're going to do is, if it's editable, this is the whole transient thing, right? If it's editable, uh, editable, not editable, we're not going to eat it, we're going to edit it. Um, we are going to convert the collection to a transient, then we're going to reduce with conj bang, that's the transient version of conj, and at the end we're going to call persistent. Um, and it also retains the metadata. Um, and if it's not a uh, editable collection, then we're just going to uh, use um, uh, the normal conj, and we won't worry about transients. So let's uh, another thing I wanted to look at there is if our input collection here is um, let's see here if we put meta on it of uh, foo is true, um, and then we do meta at the end, what we see is sure enough foo is still true on the metadata returned by this collection or by this operation. So it does propagate metadata, which is also a nice thing to have. Okay, so there's one other thing that's kind of interesting about this, and that is we're using reduce, which means that optimizations around things like range can also be used. So here range, because this is used in the, a reducing context, won't actually create a list of 10 items. It will just say, here's how we reduce over this. It creates a loop into is then kind of inserts itself into that loop and it's optimized. So there's a whole another thing on tra um, transducers, a tutorial on that. I don't didn't intend today to keep mentioning the other tutorials I have. It just happens to be that way. So the one other thing I wanted to, uh, or two things we want to talk about. First of all, um, into also accepts um, a transducer. So it, we could say into and range of 10, and we could say filter odd, and now we're only going to get the odd um, uh, numbers from that range. 
right? And we can do comp, you know, and say filter uh, partial, um, uh, where I guess this is where three is greater than that, so this would only get one. There we go. It's a little weird because I use partial there. Uh, but, you know, we could say five here. And then we get one and three, right? So we can we can insert transducers into there, and this whole thing takes advantage of transducers. Now, what's kind of cool to me about into, and the other thing we haven't mentioned yet, is that we don't have to have an empty collection here at the beginning. We could have um, one, two, three, and then we're going to also pour into that ten, and we get zero one. Uh, uh, you know, that's that's uh, we get zero through nine here. Um, and if we actually convert this to a vector, we would see that we get two, three, four, and then the concatenation on that, right? So for vectors, this almost acts like a concat, an eager concat, if you will. But what we can do is start to use some things like sets and get some really kind of interesting results with this. For instance, union of A and B. If we assume, like closure core set does, um, or closure set, I guess, that A and B are sets, we could do into A, B, and that's union. So what's the union of 1 and 2 and 2 and 3? Well, it's 1, 2, and 3, right? We've poured the one collection into the other to create our result. Um, and we could do some other ones here. So let's do... Um, Let's see, intersection um, would be all of the things that are in both one and the other, right? So then, um, so the intersection of A and B would be into this filter A, B. So look what we're doing here. We're, pull, we're going to go through all the items in B, and we're only going to pass the ones that are in A. And then we're going to put those into a set. So the intersection of 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 is 2. And so it's that's what I really like about into is there's all of these ways that we can leverage these diff these three abilities. The fact that we're we have reduce uh, that we're using a, a, a reducing um, constructs, the fact that we can have an input collection that can be anything we want as long as we can conj into it. And then we have transducers. And based upon that, we can build these set operations. In fact, if we were to go to up here and require um, set, closure set as S, and then we're going to do S union. Let's take a look at that. How is union implemented? <laughs> well, they didn't use in two, but they could have. Um, and why why do they do that here? That's interesting. Oh, that they're doing a um, an optimization here. But actually, you know, this this code is, is quite old. Um, maybe that's something we should do sometime is uh, submit a patch uh, to this that that uh, turns a bunch of this into using um, uh, uh, the into uh, intersection here is kind of the same way. Um, this is all before transducers or anything like that. And so this was probably about the fastest way to, to do this sort of thing. Uh, as well as if you accept multiple parameters like, um, uh, you know, var arg stuff, there's there's more advanced ways to do this. But at any rate, that's that's Intu. Um, what I, the, the things I kind of find cool about Intu, uh, they work with transducers, you can give it an input collection, it, it does the transient stuff automatically for you, and it recognizes automatically if your collection is uh, reducible and uh, leverages the optimizations of that as well. Uh, so that's uh, the tutorial for today. Thank you for watching.